what is the problem that you're trying to tease out with the hoax? Well, even if I may step back before that, so we, we published this paper and so many people said, this paper doesn't do what you think it does. If, if you really want to show that there's a problem, that it, the scholarship is not rigorous, that it's ideologically based, that there are, um, it's not tethered to reality, there's insufficient evidence for these claims, what you really need to do is you need to do A, B, C, D, E. So, okay, let's do A, B, C, D, E. So my writing partner and I did exactly, they gave us a roadmap and we followed the roadmap to a T. You need to publish more papers and more journals and you need to make certain kind. We just thought we did everything they told us to do. So uh, the purpose of it, and we wrote it up in Aereo Magazine, was to expose the bankruptcy of, of much of the scholarship that's coming out of these fields and that's informing public policies. And what are the fields that you're targeting that you're worried about? Almost everything with the word studies in it. <laughs> that's a lot. What, is the, what does one form of studies have in common with another form of studies that's problematic? They're ideologically based. They're not, they start with their conclusions first and they work backward. That's not the way science works. That's not the way evidence ought to work. You ought to have- right, but the cultural studies professor might say, well, that's because it's not science, it's cultural studies. So well, it doesn't the, work according to a scientific uh, method. It, it, it's it's all great, about the, getting our hands dirty, reading various texts and trying to it, understand their, their relationship to each other and well, great. how they then don't, then don't Then don't claim it's true and don't form, when someone wants to form public policies on it, say, no, 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 this is basically just, these are just our musings. Can you give us examples of things that are held to be true in these disciplines that you think aren't founded on fact? Oh, I, I'll, I'll give you things that, that contradict fact. <laughs> now, one of the papers that we published was, was um, we, we termed it fat bodybuilding. We argued that there should be a classification in professional bodybuilding where they don't use the word morbidly obese, but morbidly obese people can come and display their fat in, in non-competitive ways. And that bodybuilding <laughs> competitions um, need to allow this. It's the fight. I originally wrote in the I'm a big Star Trek fan. I wrote this is the final frontier of fat activism to penetrate into the world of professional bodybuilding. And the journal editor was upset at the word final frontier. I took it from the Star Trek reference, but she looked at it as the, the um, slaughter of the Native Americans. So a, a great example would be in the journal fat studies, for example. The entire journal is predicated on fat acceptance. It's not what people would think. Is it about A1Cs, you know, the amount of sugar you've had in your blood or how many macronutrients you should have or should you intermittent fast? It's about none of that. It's a fat advocacy journal. And so when these um, uh, articles come out, the professors assign the art articles in class and test students on these. So they're basically being asked right or wrong answers to things that are factually incorrect. And that's just one small example. But I think it's an example that shows it's directly how these fields can, they're kind of like toxins to people's conceptions of reality, particularly young girls' susceptibility to, they call it healthy at every size. And this, of course, spans not just in terms of body image, but across a whole suite of, I suppose, Correct. cultural type issues, right? And anyone who's done a university course in the past 30 years in, is familiar with, like when I was at uni, instead of Australian history, there was a, a subject called Making Australia, which you, where you learned to problematize and complicate traditional narratives of Australian history from the perspective of, of oppressed groups like Indigenous Australians, which is exactly. a perfectly worthwhile thing to do, but I didn't yet know enough Australian history to understand even what we were doing. So we were deconstructing things that hadn't yet been constructed to my 19 year old mind. Is this just something that universities play around with and always have? No, well, just on that, to, to borrow from Derrida, one of the French intellectuals, Helen Pluckrose has a wonderful piece, How French Intellectuals Ruined the West. Derrida does have a few nuggets. One of the things he says is before you can deconstruct a discipline, you have to know a discipline. So you, you have to understand history. You have to understand the rudiments of what you're talking about before you can attempt any form of deconstruction. So no, they're not playing around with this. This is not fun and games. They're teaching these, these subjects are being taught and the conclusions that they've come to are being taught as fact. 
and they're being told that this is knowledge. 